No doubt about it, having a nice background in your videos makes a big difference. Now I could probably say something here like, I've noticed that the nicer my background has got, the more subscribers I have here on YouTube, but I'm pretty sure that that would be correlation, not causation, so I'm not gonna say that. But it does make your videos a lot nicer to have a really nice background, and it's something that's taken me a while to figure out how to do. Here is a little snapshot of one of my earliest backgrounds, um, and then I graduated to this. And then I had this really simple, kind of nice, but not very fancy, gray wall background. And then I went traveling and had all sorts of weird backgrounds that didn't look very nice. And then I decorated an office that looked like this and now I'm here and my office looks like this. It has definitely been a journey. Today I'm gonna to be decorating a new space in my office so I have an alternate filming set and I wanted to bring you guys along and share with you exactly how to create a nice filming background or set for yourself. But before we get into all that, I just want you to know as you're watching this that having a nice background for your YouTube videos doesn't have to be nearly as complicated as I'm gonna make it today. I mean, you can have a plain wall behind you like I did a couple years ago and it can look not that bad. As I bring you along through this process with me today, I'll be sharing with you a few different tips on how to have a great YouTube background, even if you do keep it really simple. So this is the part of my office that you normally see in the background of my videos, but I'm going to be transforming this back corner into an alternative set so that I have another place that I can film. I love how this part looks, but I just want to be able to switch it up from time to time. So right now I've been using this area for storage over the past couple months, but I wanna add some new furniture into the space and take out all this clutter so that it can be a nice video background. Step number one is to get inspiration. So one important thing to keep in mind when you are making a YouTube set is that regardless of how simple or elaborate it is, you gotta make sure that everything in your background is serving the central purpose of the video. You don't wanna have any distracting clutter in your background because that will create a distraction. And that means that your video won't be able to serve its most important main purpose as well and people won't enjoy your video quite as much. Step number two is to create a plan. Beyond keeping things purposeful and simple, you gotta make sure that your lighting is good. This is so key. Whether you're filming on a blank wall or a decorated wall, or you have a set with a lot of depth behind you, light can make or break your set. First of all, of course, your face has to be well lit, so you need to make sure that the light is shining towards you and at a similar height to your face or a little bit above and down at an angle. And second of all, you need to make sure that your background is well lit. Now, dark backgrounds definitely can be a thing, but the main thing you wanna avoid is shadows behind you. Whether this is a shadow being cast by you on your background or shadows cast by the things in your background. So for example, um, here you can see my monitor. Well, you wouldn't wanna see a shadow that's being cast by my monitor on the background. Or all those different things on the shelves, they could be casting shadows on the back of the shelf and it just wouldn't look very polished or nice. So beyond thinking about what exactly is in your set, you gotta make sure that you have some good light sources that cast nice, even, diffused, and naturally colored light on you and the things behind you. Step number three is to shop. Okay, so we've talked about the visual of your background. We've talked about the lighting of you and your background, how important that is. And now one more thing that is so important, which you might not think has anything to do with your background, but it does, is sound. If your background is full of smooth, hard surfaces, if you are shooting in a very minimal space, in a very big room, then your sound is gonna be really echoey. And believe it or not, people are more willing to suffer through bad visual quality than bad audio quality, especially because these days, so many people do watch YouTube videos on their phones and with the sound coming into their ears and earbuds. So you gotta make sure that it isn't uncomfortable to listen to. So for this reason, if possible, you wanna fill your background and your entire set with soft surface and lots of textures because those will absorb sound and trap the echoes so that they don't come bouncing back at you and make for some uncomfortable sounds.
And that brings us to step four, which is to arrange the things that we bought. And this is the finished product. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So let me show you around. So first of all, you need to realize that the entire space I'm working with here is actually quite small. So I wanted to make sure I could maximize this space. It's about seven feet this way, the amount that you'll see in a normal shot when I shoot here. And then from that wall to where I'm normally placing the camera is about eight feet. This is just a corner of my home office and there's not that much room over there. I've got some bookshelves and my desk and things over there that I had to make sure got out of the shot. So first of all, I needed to keep everything pretty condensed in here, but I wanted to avoid getting the corner, which right now you can see in the shot because I felt that if you could see the corner in the shot, then you'd very clearly see where the edge of the room was, obviously, and that would make the room feel a bit smaller than if you could just see the wall extending on either side and you didn't know exactly how big the room really was. So even though I'm shooting in a corner, I didn't want it to look like I was shooting in a corner. Now, second, I wanted some depth in the shot. So I have started my decorating of the shot way at the back wall, actually attaching things to the wall, but then I've added a few things and staggered them towards the camera so that even though this entire space here is no more than about three and a half feet, we're still getting a little bit of depth and I'll be able to make sure that these elements that are behind me are out of focus, which is going to make the shot look a lot more professional. Then to make the shot a little bit more interesting, I added two live elements. One of them is this practical light here. It's just a lamp. A practical light is a light that you can see in the shot and its purpose isn't really to illuminate the shot, but more to just create a little bit more contrast and kind of extend the dynamic range of the shot. So we've got something here that will be the brightest point of the shot. It makes things a little bit more interesting and it also does help to illuminate the background a little bit and also cast a little bit of light on the back of my head when I'm sitting here in the chair so that I have a little bit of a backlight on me. I also added this clock, which unfortunately isn't going to make it into the shot most of the time, but occasionally it will. And I think that it adds a nice creative element because you don't normally see live clocks in shots. And there's a good reason for that, but I thought it would be nice to kind of break the mold and just make things a little bit more interesting. The final thing that I want to bring to your attention is what I did to help the sound in this space. Now, first of all, you can't see it, but there is a rug here in my office and that helps a lot. I've also added other elements throughout the office, such as plants and books to help absorb some of the sound. But specifically in this set, I added this padded chair. So rather than using a chair made out of a hard or smooth material. Padded chair will help to absorb a little bit of sound, kind of like a cushion would. And then specifically, I've added these three acoustic panels here on the wall, and I've also got one more over on that wall that you can't see right now. And these panels are specially designed to absorb the maximum amount of sound possible and really reduce any echo in the space and make the sound sound absolutely as good as it can. Now, before we wrap this up, let me quickly walk you through how much each of these different pieces cost. However, I wanna emphasize that you really could accomplish something very similar by repurposing different items from your house or by buying used items. When I did this, I was in a bit of a time crunch, so I didn't have time to hunt around for bargains. So I purchased most of these items online and a couple of them locally. This chair that I'm sitting in was the most expensive item and it cost around $150. This lamp here cost $100. I'll leave links to all of these things below in case you're interested. So that's 250. This plant stand here I got locally as well as each of the plants. Each of the plants cost about $10 and then the plant stand was 30. So 250 plus 60 would bring us to 310. The three acoustic panels back there, they each cost $50. I got those online as well. So that's $150 bringing us to 460. And then the clock, which you can't even see right now, uh, was another $30. So that would be $490. So about $500 to build out the set. Of course, I already had the camera and the lights and all those other parts because I do regular make YouTube videos, so I'm not talking about the cost of that here, but just to give you an idea of how much each of these pieces cost. I hope you got some great tips by watching this video about how to build out your own YouTube set, including things like staggering your pieces towards the camera to give more depth to your shot, avoiding showing corners of rooms, as well as adding some interesting live elements and some pieces to help absorb sound, increasing your sound quality. If you did enjoy the video and find it helpful, then be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below so that more people can find this video and learn how to build YouTube sets as well. And finally, one last thing, 
before we wrap this up. I'm assuming that you're interested in building a YouTube set so that you can make YouTube videos. And in making YouTube videos, you probably want to grow a YouTube channel and get views on those videos because what's the point of making videos if nobody watches them, right? So if that is the case, then check down below for a link to a free class that I teach. It's an on-demand class. You can watch it at any time. And it's all about how to get views on YouTube when you're just starting out specifically when you have zero subscribers. So if you wanna find out how to get views on your videos with zero subscribers, then just check down below for that link, completely free. And like I said, you can watch it on your own schedule because I know everybody is busy these days and everybody's schedules are a little bit chaotic. All right, well, that's everything for today. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next week. And now I wanna mention one more thing that will again kind of make or bake your, make or bake your background. Don't bake your background. Unhelpful. Get out of my shot. <laughs> <laughs>